White people, you get really sensitive when you talk about race. You really do sometimes. Very sensitive. And I always wonder, where was this sensitivity 300 years ago? <laughs> Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Sire. Sire. That is me. I feel like a sire, I should, like... Oh, it just means sir. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't mean uh, you have to be super polite back. <laughs> I'll be rude back. So this is your first, uh, this is your first big special, right, in the United yeah, States? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've done a couple back home. This is my first one in, in, in America. Where are you from? I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. How long have you been doing comedy there? I've been None doing... None of you are actually from there. That was not a... Hey, they, were, they were being polite. Yeah. <laughs> Tires? Um, uh, when did I start doing stand... I started doing stand-up when I was 17. Mm -hmm. yeah, How old are you now? Stand -up. I'm 33 right now. So at this current moment, <laughs> at this exact hour. Is your birthday tomorrow? Um, no, it's in May the 16th. So you're 33 for a little while. Yeah, for another seven months. I feel like I'm eight years old. Only eight-year-olds keep tabs of how old they are. How old are you? I'm eight and seven months. <laughs> Sorry. So what, what, uh, what, what drew you to doing stand-up when you were 17? What did I do? What, what drew you to stand-up What drew me? It was weird. It was a school project. Uh, so we had this school project in my school, which was essentially called Job Shadow. And so what happens during Job Shadow, we have a week in the 11th grade where we, we follow whatever career we want, and we write about it. And you know, some people became lawyer, uh, followed lawyers. Some guys went to accounting firms. Some guys went to sound engineering uh, studios. I followed some comedians for a week, and I liked it. That's it. That's what happened. And then I, I just told my mom, I don't want to do anything else but stand-up since I was 17. And that's what I've been doing since that's, I was 17. I feel like uh, in America, if you were 17 and you were going to tell your teacher or your parents that you were going to follow stand-up comedians around, they would be like, please don't. Like, and even the comedians themselves might be like, you don't want to follow me, kid. Were the, how were the comedians that you were, were following cool. I mean, um, they were really cool. I mean, I still had to, a lot of work to do um, after that. But I kind of knew what I want. I think the, 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 the trick is to, the earlier you know what you want and you uh, give, you, give the energy of whatever you want to do, you, you give the time and energy to that, you, you, you have a, um, a great chance of succeeding in that career. This is like the thing that kind of stops people from actually doing the things that they want to do is that they really don't know what they want to do, first of all. So the sooner you know what you want to do, the easier it just becomes. So I was lucky because I, I, I knew what I want to do, and I convinced my mom. And the thing about parents as well, can you swear on the show? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you can? Oh, yeah. So if you are like a teenager and you're always fucking up, it's hard for your parents to trust you, so they don't trust your career decisions neither. Right, so you have to kind of convince them to let them to let them give you the freedom of what you want to do. Right, so when you're 17, they're like, no, no, you can't. You know, they they they. It depends on whether they trust your decision or not. Right, right, and that depends on whether they trust you or not. Right, your, right? Tra your track history. Your track right? history, and that's how parents operate. So I had to kind of like convince my mom and I had to do several things to convince her that I was serious about this thing and I was making better decisions for so her. You had a bad track history. Yeah, I mean all teen no teenager is a saint, man. Uh -huh. All teenagers are, are bums. So yeah, absolutely. So this is your first <laughs> this is your first special in the United States. Did you tailor your material at all material at all for the United States? Were there jokes that you left out or jokes that you made different for an American audience? Yes, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I well I do stand up all over the world. So I like in the last year I've been to Amsterdam, I've been to Finland, I've been to Latvia, I've been to Edinburgh, I've been to Botswana. You know, I've been to a lot of places. So I'm constantly having to adapt and understand what the people of that particular space are thinking at every given time. So as much as I had to adapt my show for this American show. It wasn't too much of a difference because Americans, uh, um, we have a lot in common. America has a lot in common with the world because of the popular culture that you guys exude to the world, right? So um, I grew up watching Beavis and Butthead and yeah, you know what I mean? And so Americans find that crazy. Like, how did you find Beavis and Butthead where you were? F I was like, that's what America does. It's media, right? right. That's how Trump that's is running for president. It's media. 
their main export. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the it's one of the biggest exports America has. It's media. So maybe the only export that we have now that I think of it. I will. I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I I do think that. Um, so you, you I think uh, we have so much more in common. Uh, uh, America has so much more in common with the world, just purely on the fact that everyone does the things that you guys do. People think you're cool. People <laughs> think Americans are cool. Well, well not depending right. on how today goes. Yeah. I was going to say, have, Amer have people around the world thought we were cool the past five months, seven months? Um, pretty much. Depending on how people voted today, you guys either become cool, lur, or you just become bums. <laughs> <laughs> Just bombs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's it been like for you watching this election? What have you thought of it? I thought it was a joke initially. <laughs> and I was like, this is the worst prank ever. And then it just kept on going. And today is like the final day. So for me, it's been crazy how Trump just doesn't lose steam. People just go, I don't care. I, you know, it, this thing just keeps on going. And today is the final day. So. It's a bit scary, but I'm, I'm fine. I'm going home in two days. So. <laughs> you think? You think? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go home, huh? Maybe we'll see. No, well, I guess actually I think he would I, probably. He would. He would let, in, in fact, he will escort me to the airport. I'll be. <laughs> he'll make it a parade. Thank you, thank you, and I'll, I'll, I'll won't see you guys ever again, which will be sad, but it'll be cool. Now, one of the things about commenting on this election or anything about this election is that if you do it on Twitter, if you yeah. say anything about this election, you immediately get a feed of crazy people responding to it, usually Trump supporters. Have you found that at all? Is, uh, making no. Well, the thing is, um, the thing about politics, people generally are, are, are commenting on politics that are directly invested in their lives. The American election is not directly invested in my life. I live in Johannesburg. <laughs> It will be, if anything, it will be, it's a ripple effect, and that's like very far from my, my life. So I'm entertained, that's all. <laughs> I'm just thinking this is the silliest thing ever, right? People are grabbing pussies. It's insane. <laughs> it's mad. Like, do you know how crazy? Like, you guys, like, I, I think maybe you guys are used to it, and you go, oh, this is what Trump, but it's crazy. It's no, 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 crazy. we're not. It's that's mad. the thing is, we're not used to it. Oh, okay, cool. Thank, thank, thank you. And I hope you guys voted. <laughs> we're all like, for the right person. Away, it's scary. It's, it's scary the, the, the things that that man spews out of his mouth. Do people feel it around the world, do you think? Do you think like other people around the world? No, feel we are entertained. Sense? Really? Yeah, we were just like, this is crazy. How far can it go? And it's gone to the final day. This is what's, <laughs> this is like, this is like a bummy team. What's a bad team in the NBA? Like if Philadelphia, if Philadelphia is still bad. Sure. They still bad. Uh, they sucked the one season. I was like, oh, this is bad. If they made it to the final and they were playing game seven, this is what it feels like to us watching Trump. That would be triumphant. This is like not triumphant. <laughs> that would be like, oh, that's so great. This underdog team who's like kind of sweet made it to the finals. Yeah, 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 yeah. If that's the if one. If the entire team was sexual predators, maybe it would be similar. No. <laughs> no, what I'm saying is the Sixers have no business in this playoffs of the, in the final game seven. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the analogy I was trying to make. You, you ruined my analogy. Uh <laughs> <laughs> all right, you're right. I'm all right. <laughs> no, no, it's all, it's all good. It's all. I, I feel like I added to it. Maybe, maybe made it a little bit better. Um, <laughs> this, so your your special was shot in Bushwick, right here, right here in Brooklyn. Yes, and it's. Uh, I I'm a big fan of rap music, and I was listening to, I was listening to uh, 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 rap music in the '90s, and it's very different. '90s rap music. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that, no that. Brooklyn, because they. New York, New York uh, rap was very prevalent at the time. And so when I went to Brooklyn, I was expecting to see all the crazy stuff they spoke about. I saw none of that. I saw hipsters for days. It was, it was cool, though, but I, it was, I was disappointed. Like, they, I wanted to see a crackhead. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I wanted to see. I, I wanted to pet one. <laughs> no? no we, this, is what, this is what we export. <laughs> No, that's what I heard about in rap music. I was like, there's crackheads in Brooklyn. I got there, there was none. 
You didn't get to pet a crack. No, that's. I wouldn't recommend it if you had the chance. To what be do, perfectly honest. What do they bite? I don't think they, I don't think anybody crackhead or not likes to be pet. But. Okay, my bad. That's. <laughs> I'll 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 throw the food at them then. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Can we? I'm gonna have a sip of water. This is awkward. Take the sip. Take the sip. Um, so, what what made you shoot it at this place in in Bushwick? Um, we had we had several. I, I wasn't in New York. I, I I fly up and down New York, and I came uh, a couple of times to check out some venues. And there was a a venue I I really liked, but it wasn't available. And this one venue just down the road, awesome venue. Everything was available. It was great. It was like a theater style. And I was like, oh, this is the perfect venue. But fortunately, it was owned by the Catholic Church. <laughs> and they said, oh, we've got to check your material before you perform it here. That's the only rule. I was like, nah. I want to say whatever the fuck I want to say. Yeah. Right? And I didn't want a Catholic Church telling me what to do. And so I went with Bushwick. You should have just had them check out your material anyway, just for fun. Just to see what they think. Get some, get some notes from the Catholic Church on your stand-up routine. That is a horrible idea. <laughs> you no, know, that joke bombed. <laughs> how, uh, how are American stand-up audiences different from other uh, audiences around the world? I think humans are humans, you know. I think we all go through the same emotions. Uh, we've all been broken up with. We all um, fall in love. We all get hurt. We all feel hungry. So that we have more in common than we know. And so um, you find that wherever you go in the world, you are able to resonate with people regardless of who they are, just on the mere fact that we're humans. You do have some, uh, you have some jokes about gun control, which yes. is in particular to Americans, which, yes. is, which, is, which is pretty great. You have this sort of, uh, you talk about how we're always surprised when there's gun violence in this country, yeah, even though it, it happens like it every It happens week. every other day. Not, well, I mean, I'm exaggerating, I'm being hyperbolic, but it happens every. It happens a lot for you guys not to take it that seriously. Like it happens, and you guys still have a discussion. I wonder what the problem is. It's the fucking guns. How about that? Like, and listen, I shouldn't talk because I'm from South Africa. We have, you know, we have our problems trying to control guns as well. Like Oscar Pistorius, <laughs> the, the Blade Runner. He shot his girlfriend on Valentine's Day. Was that Valentine's Day? It was on Valentine's Day when you shot it. That is the one day we specifically ask you, don't shoot your girl in the face. <laughs> I didn't realize it was on Valentine's it Day. It was on Valentine's Day. Wow, that must have been a rough day. Yeah. Like, outside of the shooting, like, before the shooting, like, it must be, like, a high-pressure Valentine's Day in that house. I, I can neither comment and confer. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just know someone died. That's all, I, that's all I know. It was wild. And uh, he cried every day, though, in court. Did you guys watch the court case? A lot of people did. I didn't watch it. I didn't know he cried every day. He, oh, man, he cried every day. And I thought about why he cried every day. It's because white people never think of going to jail. <laughs> like, as white people sit here, jail is the furthest thing from your mind. Like, I'm black. I think of jail at least twice a day. <laughs> like, at least. Like, when I'm having breakfast, I'm like, oh, let's, let's try to avoid jail today. <laughs> No, because they do lock up black people. That's what happens. So I'm wary of it. So, yeah. <laughs> Especially was, in America. Was, was the Oscar Pistorius trial kind of like your OJ? Uh, pretty, yeah. It was, it was our OJ. Um, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, it was a big, it was a high profile. It was a, a celebrated, high beloved athlete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who, 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 um, who broke records and did amazing stuff and then... All of a sudden, this guy. I don't know how big OJ was. Was OJ a big superstar? Oh my God, yeah. OJ was like in in at the time of the murders, he was like a massive celebrity and superstar athlete, considered I think one of the greatest football players of all time. Oh really? But the glove did not fit. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and so he was he was off. But is he back in jail now? Let's go. Yeah, he's in jail. Oh, wicked. He goes in and out of jail, you know. All right. The way the the way he goes in and out, it's, it's, it's like he works there. He goes in and out. You know? <laughs> he's like, oh, that's 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 dope. That's dope. Although I think he's there for like thirty years right now. Thirty years. Something 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 extended. For what? Uh, kind of for the original murders, but not for that. It was sort of like a, you, you got know what I don't again, and we're gonna punish you for this. You know what I don't get about Amer the American judiciary system is how the jury system. These are random people 
Why would you let six random motherfuckers decide your life? I don't understand. How do you guys allow that? Like, people with no this is safe. the most bizarre thing ever. Let's get the most random white people to decide. No, fuck you. Well, how does it Can work? Because I, I go, because in South Africa, the person who put the, in South Africa is the judge. The judge makes all the decisions. He hears the case. Not fucking ra like what the what what? Well, judges judges make the decision on penalty. I believe here. But they don't make decisions on guilty or innocence. Yes, in South Africa, they make all the decisions. You know why? Because they went to fucking school. <laughs> they studied the law. These people don't know the fucking law. It's all about their hearts and emotions. I don't know how you guys let this shit slide. Sorry, I'm a bit emotional. <laughs> it's crazy. It's honestly similar to, 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 to voting a little bit. Everybody in the country votes for in the election, which is great, but so many people aren't actually that educated about it and they're voting what they feel. Then not everyone should be allowed to vote. <laughs> I think you should write a paragraph on why you are voting. <laughs> and if you walk into the voting booth and you say, what's a paragraph? You're not allowed to vote. That's it. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Go home. <laughs> Someone who's a professional reads your paragraph and oh, Okay, you can vote. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, 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 um, I don't know. Do For the sake of election day, everybody vote. Everyone vote. Everyone. Can, I mean, I don't know. You, you can't let let six year old votes though. Six six year old people, kids, vote. I might, depending on who they're voting for. <laughs> In this election, at least. They're gonna vote for Trump. Trump's entertaining. That's that might be true. And yeah. he's bright. You know, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It is bright. Um, it's like a ball from a ball. <laughs> that got looks like a pumpkin. He looks like a pumpkin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A carved pumpkin. Yeah, well. Evil, like a, like a scary pumpkin, too. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, um, I don't want to discuss pumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> you have a, did something happen? You have a cool laugh. You have a cool laugh. Did something, something happen with a pumpkin? With pumpkins? Set, set, no, I don't have a thing about pumpkins. That's why I don't want to talk. I'm just like, I don't have anything to talk about pumpkins. <laughs> uh, let's ask the audience if they have any questions. Do you have any, any questions? questions? Oh, that's cool. Are we going to open it up to the audience? Yeah. That's cool, man. Hey. 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 Hello. I have a question. Yes, so ma'am. There's a lot of movies that's made in America that yes. depicts Africa. So I wanted to know, do you like Coming to America or any of those other American-made uh, movies that are depict Africa? Oh yeah, Blood I, I like I liked I liked uh, coming to America because Eddie Murphy was one. And Eddie Murphy and uh, Sonny Ho, a senior a senior Ho were really funny and they killed it. So I have no beef with that. Was also a comedy, so it, it has a context it's set up. But for me, um, I don't think it's America's depiction. I think it's the world's depiction of Africa. There's some developed parts of Africa. There's some very rural parts of Africa. Um, like, the, the, you guys still get this advert where you can feed an African with a dollar a day. I just want to say, you, you can't. Like, for me, I'm at least $50 a day. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm like a very expensive African. Like, you, if you want to feed me, you got to step your shit up. Like, that's... Uh, <laughs> but, I, <laughs> but I do think I do... <laughs> ah, this is fun. Uh, <laughs> I, I do think that um, um, it's the same with everything, you know? Like, I had my perceptions of some countries, and when I got to the place, it's like a total different thing. So the more you read up about a place or you educate yourself about anything, in fact, the more you get enlightened about it. I mean, you, you can't listen to Fox on everything, right? I don't know. Is Fox the... Fox, oh, yeah, Fox. Fox is bad, right? Fox That's what I know. Bad. Okay, good. So I think... Uh, what was your question, ma'am? <laughs> it was, what do you think about uh, like the depictions of, of, of Africa in movies, in American movies? Um, yeah, so I like to come into America. The one thing that really is, it, sometimes is crazy is like sometimes they just use like an African language, and so they'll they'll use like on Blood Diamond or whatever movie uh, they'll use like a language that nobody speaks around that area, and it just randomly, and then you, like you like. Oh, that's my language. Nobody, nobody in that country speaks that, that language. I mean, my language, my language is dope, man. Like, if you greet me in my language... What is it? It's Tosa. Tosa. Yeah, like, if you greet me in my language, one of the possible responses could be... <laughs> oh, that's 
I know what Can you're thinking. Honest? What? What? Why would you clap? It's my language. You fucking with me? Like why? What? You fucking with me a little bit? I'm not. That's an actual sentence. What was the sentence? Don't come up, come up, come live in Just it's. Uh, I'm doing the sent. He asked for the sentence. Essentially, me, it's like a saying, right? It's like a, a selling like hotcakes. You guys say that here? Yeah. Have you ever bought a hotcake? No. Exactly. So, but you say it anyway. Yeah. Right. So it's like is like a saying, which just means I'm I'm as good as the leaf of vinegar. Makes no sense. <laughs> right. And a lot of sayings make no sense. So but my back started aching. On Saturday, I headed to the doctor. Uh, he made me lie on my back. He found a, a pimple and sent me home. Can I ask you that? Uh, Plausible! <laughs> the, uh, you thought I made that shit up. No. Why? Why would I make up a whole language? Do you know the time to make up a whole fucking language? It's just, <laughs> it's just a, logistically, it's a nightmare. Was that your is that your first language or is English your first language? No, that's my first language. That's your first language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long? I mean, just out of curiosity, uh, you know, because like Mandarin has like several different tones. When I don't know anything about Mandarin. Well, I'm just saying as a language, it has several different tones, which yeah. a lot of times are like this very specific way of just kind of. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not like a word almost. It's just a tone and a sound. It, when you're doing the the clicks. The clicks, yeah. Yeah. Is are you are there several different kinds of clicks that you? Oh do? yeah. yeah. Get the f <laughs> He's impressed. I love it. I love it. I'm just, I'm just, I've never, I've never been able to ask anybody that question before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's different, there's different clicks. There's, uh, that's an, you could, you know, there's many words. Uh, does it do, does it, does it, does it emphasize or does it add plural? Man. He thought he was going to do comedy with me. I just didn't know. Um, no, no, no. I, I, I don't know how to articulate how my... I'm just speak Like, if I asked you about English, you wouldn't be able to articulate it. I can just speak the language. I can't explain how it functions. Oh, okay. I'm not a linguist. That's what I mean. I can't, I can't articulate. You, know, you ever watch a movie and you're just like, I just enjoyed that movie. Right. I don't know. If someone said, how did that make you, make you feel... It was cool. I just enjoyed it. Fuck it. You know, so that's how I feel about the language. I'm like, I speak the language fluently. I can't articulate how many clicks we have, that kind of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, next question. Hey. Um, Hello. First, I want to say you might like this ESPN 30 for 30 OJ Made in America. It's five parts, but it's really interesting. Um, oh, thank you. Recommendation. Yeah, I know. I know it's like annoying. Okay. But I'm curious about OJ. <laughs> yeah. I probably will. Yeah. It's interesting, but um, it, when you go to other countries, is there satire? Or in Africa, do they do satire? Or is um, that in America? I did satire in South Africa. In fact, I got nominated for two Emmys for it. Um, I know, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I did a sh I did a show in South Africa called Late Night News, and the show. We did it for six years. It, it ran for like 12 seasons, and we got two Emmy nominations. I just stopped doing it a year ago. I was just tired of it, because you have to read up all this news, and, and it depresses me a little bit, so I just stopped. That, yeah. That's it. And, but they are, I mean, it depends what, I mean, in Egypt they have satire, I think in Morocco. There's, there's several parts in, in Africa where, 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 where we do have satire. Um, Egypt had that. But most, most African countries have satire. I mean, yeah, most, most, I, where I'm from, which I can speak for, right. we, we had a satire. There's a satirical show now. There's, there's several satirical shows. But the thing about satirical shows, they're only relevant to the people who care about it. Like when I watch an American satirical show, I, mean, I watch it because my, my, my boy is hosting one of them. Oh, Trevor Noah? Yeah, so now I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that's cool. You but know Trevor? Generally, yeah, we were, we were hanging out last night. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And um, and so you you only invest you you invested in the politics of the place, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, so I don't care about Egyptian politics per se. I just I, so the satire makes no sense to me, right? So American satire doesn't make sense to me. Satire is quite specific to the to the place that it exists in because it's very nuanced. You can't really export. Yeah, night, yeah, nightly satire. Nah, you you can't. I, 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 but Americans do it because you know you always think you're important. 
That is true. <laughs> no, nothing about what's going on in the rest of the world, but the rest of the world knows everything about what's going on in yes. America. Yes. I, I, I know that Waka Flocka is vegan. <laughs> I actually did not know that. Next question. You know, you guys know that, right? He's vegan. That's, that's how much I know about Americans. Waka Flocka is vegan. <laughs> Next question. Hey, man. Uh, so I was just wondering, yes, like, sir. was it hard for you to make that transition from uh, being a comedian in South Africa to uh, America by any chance? Um, I think that... Um, uh, if you funny, you funny anyway. Like when I was young, I used to listen to some Eddie Murphy and I didn't, you know, compute it as, oh, that's American humor. I just thought this dude is funny, right? And I, when I watched um, some other comedians, I, I go, these guys are funny. And that applies to me. It's just that I'm from a place that possibly people not not heard of, right? So it's not a, it's, it's, it's the emotion of, it's the, it's the emotional connection that makes, that, that makes the laughter travel, you know? It's, it's not necessarily um, the content. Do you know what I mean? It's like resonance. It's like uh, we all, like you guys were laughing this whole time because I just, I say things and they go, we get what he's saying. He said, walk a flocka. <laughs> Next question. Oh, I think that's it. That's all that's we it. have time for. That's, that's it. it. All right, cool. When can people see your special? Uh, it comes out on the 15th uh, of, uh, of, of this November, month, of, of November. Month. Uh, but you can pre-order now on, uh, on, on Vimeo. You can follow me on uh, Twitter, and we can, you know, chat, and I'll tell you where. What's your handle on Twitter? On Lois Ogola, L-O-Y-I-S-O-G-O-L-A. <laughs> Lois Ogola, thank you so much for being here, man. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, bro. Thank you.